television and radio host, TV executive, producer, and DJ Dineo Ranaka's career is reaching new heights. Ranaka is known for her infectious energy on radio, her family reality TV shows, and as the executive producer of the Mzansi Magic drama series, Mzalwam. She recently added club music DJ to her resume after releasing her debut house single, Ukona, alongside Nokwazi. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, she is also the host of the new television show, Breaking the Silence. Ranaka is also working to create awareness of anxiety by releasing a clothing line called Anxiety Under Control. She joins us now to tell us more about her career moves and making music and mental health awareness. Very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Ms. Kubai. <laughs> Should I say? Uh, you know, it's, it's been a long time. Yeah. And looking at the work that you've put in, I mean, I don't think the road has not been rocky, but the achievements are incredible. You have got your finger in so many, your fingers in so many pies. Let's talk about some of the, the, the work that you're doing. A lot of the work that I'm doing is pretty much entertainment focused. Um, I think that the greatest achievement in all the work that I've done is being able to make a mark for myself as a content producer, a television producer, and uh, running a sustainable production house, which is something that I've always wanted to do. And um, just having fun with my career, like literally not limiting myself to whatever boxes people put me in. Yeah. If you put me in a box, I'm like literally tossing the lid off the box and popping out with newness and freshness and mm -hmm. you know, young energy, jovial energy. So um, I'm, really, I'm really just literally living my best life in entertainment right now. Yeah. You um, are living your best life, yes, I, I agree. Just looking and watching at your resilience when it comes to, to your work and your aspirations. I mean, you started on radio years ago, going to YFM and, and other radio stations. What, what has that journey been like? Do you think it perhaps was the, the stepping stone that introduced you to all your other talents? Of course, of course, of course. I think um, a lot of my... A lot of the success that I've experienced over the years in my career is truly owed to my years spent at YFM, um, my wilder years, and I think we were talking about it just now yeah. before we went on air. Um, I, I, I was given an opportunity to truly express myself, to truly be entrusted with the responsibility of, you know, being a leader in radio, and um, that, that really catapulted me into wherever I am today, and it was, it was a stepping stone, as you describe yeah. it. Um, a lot of that is owed to those years. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You've lived a very public life, Dineo. Mm. Uh, a lot of what you do uh, and the work that you do has really been out for the public to see, interpret, and portray in whichever manner. What has that been like? What sort of experience do you think you've gained from that? I mean, now, as you and I speak, the most recent thing was uh, the, the whole Metro FM thing. The, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and that is also public, and, and we've heard about it and, and seen you go back um, yeah. to, to work. Um, I'll always bounce back. I'll always land on my feet. And I think having had lived my life so loudly um, has attracted a lot of public opinion, um, sometimes negative, particularly yeah. on the Bluebird application. Mm -hmm. They love to drag. They love to cause people unnecessary depression. They love to be negative. They love to cause people unnecessary anxiety. And the thing about me is I'm truly a mind-resilient person. I've got a thick skin. And um, I've been able to literally just exist throughout public and like live through public opinion and um, always find a way to find beauty, happiness, and wellness within myself. And um, it hasn't been the easiest thing living out loud. It hasn't been a smooth sailing journey, mm -hmm. having my world in, 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 at the top of the lips of you know, public opinion. Yeah. Um, I'm also human, sometimes it does get to me, sometimes it does almost like, it does make me think like, are people really that sad within themselves to have such overt negative opinions about one individual. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it almost encourages me to say you're making people feel stuff. You know, for as long as you're making people feel some type of way, you really are living and doing something. Because when you're not making people feel anything, be it yeah. you're a broadcaster, be it you are just literally living your layman life and you're living your simple life or whatever life that you're living, if you're not touching people in some type of way that they have an opinion about you, then you really aren't moving souls, are you? So mm. I suppose, you know, um, my life being lived out loud is, 
is a needle yeah, in and, and a lot of people's you like world. To play. You really do. I do love to play. I remember you doing cartwheels at, at very odd times of the day <laughs> <laughs> in very public spaces. But the, the other element, I mean, you mention a lot of punchy lines. You talk about depression, anxiety, stress. Yeah. Those are really serious elements of people's lives, especially yeah. looking at now, more than ever, the impact yeah. of COVID-19, people being indoors, losing jobs, and a lot of emotions being felt. You have decided to speak about mental illness uh, and make some sort of impact when it comes to awareness. True, true. I'm, I'm going to make reference once again to the Bluebird application. I really have to because there's a rise in negativity in that app. There's a rise in sadness. Um, and I, I forgive a lot of people all the time for the negative things that they've had to say about me because when one says so many harsh things about another person to try to bring them down, I see it as a person reaching out for help and projecting their own sadness onto a person who's radiant and happy. Yeah. And I think it's very important for us to remember that whatever is happening outside of us is not necessarily what's happening inside of us. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, when I look at the turmoil around me, I always remind myself that inside of you, Dinewa, are seeds that have been planted years ago, years ago, and you're doing well at nurturing those seeds. And I had an interview just the other day, Mpo, and I was, I was asked, if you were to be given a superpower, what would your superpower be, and yeah. what, would, what would you choose as a superpower? And I, I burst out into tears, actually, because I said, my one superpower that I would choose to have is the ability to enter people's minds and enter people's hearts and just soothe them where it hurts the most and just shed light where it's darkest and show them that if you hold on a little bit longer, your sadness is not going to stay its welcome. It's not, it won't overstay its welcome in your mm -hmm. life. I don't mean to ruin it for you, but the end of the story and the end of your narrative in the sadness that you're going through and the darkness that you're going through is actually a better day. I would literally invade their minds and invade their hearts to show them a better day, to show them that just hang on a little bit longer. Don't worry about what you're feeling today. Focus on what it might be like tomorrow. Focus on the happiness that you might experience tomorrow. Yeah. And that's a guaranteed happiness. So suicidal people, I would, I would penetrate them and invade them so that I can just show them that their lives are worth living. Depressed people, I would invade them and just like literally enter them to show them that there is happiness at the end of sitting it out and waiting it out and healing it out and anyone else that's going through hardship and that's battling a, a sort of mental darkness because even if you're a happy person once in a blue moon and you've got no mental illnesses once in a blue moon you do go through a sadness and a darkness within yourself where you question all the happiness Absolutely. that you might be going through and you question whether or not you're worthy of sitting in the seats that you sit in and having the blessings that you have where you, where you doubt yourself and your own blessing and you're almost like but you gaslight yourself you're like but I'm not worthy of these mm -hmm. things you actually are yeah. you actually are so Did if this, I could show people that yeah I really would is this the foundation now to some of the work that has come out of you know this conversation your your clothing line and also looking at your introspecting on your spirituality and and taking to your calling as a traditional healer absolutely absolutely I think it is I think I'm called and I've been put through all this hardship and I've been dragged for the longest time mm -hmm. for anything and everything and I've been I've been under attack for the longest time and also myself and making errors that put me in spaces where I'm under attack and making those 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 taking those steps where I even introspect, I'm like, but you could have played it better in this regard. You could have done better in this regard. You could have protected yourself better in this regard. Um, I've been put through all of that to be used as almost like that vessel and a custodian and an ambassador of, a, of, of almost like of resilience, right? Yes. Of, of saying, look at her, she's been broke down how many times? Mm -hmm. Look at her, she should have been depressed how many times? Look at her. She should have given up how many times? Look at her. Maybe she did have suicidal thoughts. You yeah. don't know this. Look at her. She probably looked at her life and her children and once in her lifetime thought maybe death would be the ultimate solution to all of the darkness that I've experienced on the inside. But still she rose. Still she overcame it. Still she, she chose to smile. Still she chose to work I through the I want us to hurt. quickly squeeze in yeah. your music. Of As course. you're talking, you of sound course. like you're rhyming now yeah. to, to a rap song. Yeah. I mean, that's also something exciting. 
What? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, we, we first saw you release a song, and very quickly, let's talk about your music now and what you're doing. I'm very excited about the music. I've been in studio with the uh, Regalo Joints as well as Uno Guazi. Uh, the song is called Ukona. It's really about keeping the faith. It's really about knowing that whoever is in your life spiritually that you believe in, that you pray to, so don't give up, yeah. uh, uh, d don't lose hope. And it's all about, really, if you have a best friend, if you have a person that you truly have there in your life as a support structure, believe that that person is there for you. And that's really the messaging around the song. Through your hustle, through your dark days, through whatever it is that you might be going through, believe that whatever it is and whoever it is that's there for you as a support structure, Ukona, Ukona, Ukona Njalo. So um, that's what the music is about. And I just want to share it with people. When's the album coming out? Um, there won't be an album coming out anytime soon. There'll be an EP coming out next year, in the first quarter of next year. But for the rest of the year, expect a lot of singles, expect a lot of music videos, expect a lot of hype around my stuff, expect a lot of me just giving my fans for the first time top tier quality where top tier music is concerned. You know, if I could, I would applaud you at this point. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much for coming in and uh, inspiring so many people on so many different elements with this conversation. Dineo Ranaka, uh, that uh, television and radio host, TV executive, producer, fashion designer, um, as well as a DJ, talking to us about uh, some of the highlights of her life.